every young mother, especially the mother of a firstborn, thinks that her child is God and totally unique. And she's absolutely right on both counts. Every child is divine. Every child is a bite-sized piece of God. When John's Gospel says this morning, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, he's talking not just about Jesus Christ, he's talking about every single little baby that's ever been born. Because every little child is a bite-sized piece of God. It's a spirit in a space, so it's a soul on safari on planet Earth. So every young mother who's gazed adoringly on her newborn is looking into the eyes of God and is looking into an extraordinary, unique version of God because no two of us are alike. There is no child born on planet Earth who's not absolutely unique. Every child has a unique soul history of previous incarnations, history it's accumulated, missions it's been on, and it comes in with a very unique set of genetics and a very unique set of abilities, a very unique mission, a very unique family that is coming through. So every child is totally unique and is totally a child of God. So how many of you here gazed on your firstborn child and realized that you were looking at the face of God? Yeah? And I wonder, what did you envision for your firstborn as you thought about what kinds of glorious futures did you envision for us? And unfortunately, it's good in a way that we can't see far into the future because in the life of every single one of us, there's going to be trauma, going to be difficulties. And unfortunately, if we could see the traumas ahead, it would overpower the hopes and the great times that are ahead for the life of your child. You'd be, kind of, you'd be devastated if your child were to experience real difficulties at some stage of their lives or a premature death. You, know, you wouldn't be able to handle it as a young mother. And so, in some senses, it's good that we can't see that far ahead. It would be good if we could see far enough ahead to realize that there's a short-term future, there's a long-term future, and there's an eternal future. And unfortunately, if we could only see the short-term and the long-term, we would focus on the trauma and not see the eventual outcome. Because in the short-term, you know, the child is going to have to survive in a world which is a difficult world. In the long-term, your child as an adult is going to have to survive in a world which is in a difficult world. But if you could see long-term eternally, you realize that your child is from God, is of God, and returns to God, just like you yourself. So the long, the really eternal outcome is that we merge back with source. But in the meantime, the short-term outcomes and the long-term outcomes, if we could see them, they would cripple us. So I'm thinking of Mary this morning, uh, as she gazed into the eyes of her little newborn child, and all these wondrous events began to happen, shepherds come in and begin talking about who this child is. She goes into the temple to have the child you know, circumcised on the eighth day, and two old people, an old lady called Anna and an old man called Simeon, they come in and they begin talking about the future of this child. But Simeon says to her, your own, soul, your own soul, a sword shall pierce, so that the secret thoughts of many will be laid bare. And we're told twice in Luke's Gospel, on two different occasions, Mary went back home with her child, wondering what all these words meant. So she's looking at her little baby, her, her firstborn child, and wondering what kind of a future this child is going to encounter. And depending how far forward she could see, she would either be, you know, so proud of him or absolutely devastated. If she got to the beginning of his public ministry and she could hear him preach, or if she could see him raise the dead, she would be quelling. She'd be so proud of her little child. If she could look three years further beyond that and to see this child hanging on a gibbet, dying and being mocked, she would have been devastated. But so again and again and again, she's holding this vision and wondering, uh, what will the life of my little child look like? But today I want to um, look at another little baby who's just been born, just less than, it's less than a day old. And look at the... Um, the Jewish wedding ceremony. And there's a part of the ceremony where the bride circumambulates the groom seven times. Now, we live on a planet which is a bride. It's Gaia. It's our mother, Gaia. And she circumambulates father-son every year. She does a whole circumambulation each year. And this is part of her wedding vows, you know, to father, father-son. And together they create life between them. And this morning, you know, less than what... Eight hours ago, you know, Mother Earth gave birth again to a brand new year. 
And as she looks at this little baby of hers right now, I wonder, is she looking in the short-term future, the long-term future, or the eternal future for this planet of hers? I remember having a, a vision I share with you many times, years and years and years ago, of watching souls stand in front of God and volunteer for different kinds of missions, different kinds of incarnations. And this one great soul, whom I call Gaia, stood in front of God and said, I will animate the third rock from the sun in that solar system, and I will breed life until I throw up a life form capable of recognizing its own divinity and the divinity of all other life forms. And for 3.7 billion years, she's been producing all kinds of life forms, beginning with single cell protozoa, all the ways up to human beings. And at this stage, we're on the verge of either breaking through into Christ consciousness or breaking down in some kind of a nuclear disaster. And so the mother holds this baby year after year and wonders what the final outcome is. And today she's given birth to a brand new baby. And as she looks into the eyes of this little child of hers, I wonder what kind of a future is she envisioning? So let me finish with one just final image. Uh, because in a sense, it's not just Gaia that's given birth to this new year. Every single one of us is giving birth to our own version of this new year. And to remind you, when you were a young mother breastfeeding your baby, you didn't stop loving the baby because it soiled its diaper. You continued to breastfeed a baby that continued to soil its diaper. And the year is going to soil its diaper, you know, several times in the course of the next 365 days. We have to continue breastfeeding it.